Greetings Minecrafters and welcome to another exciting Minecraft discussion. My name is Kimberly Quinn and I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be doing these videos. Wow. And and today, uh, you know, we've, we've been talking a lot about authenticity, right? We haven't really spoken that much about what it means when we um, behave in an inauthentic way because inauthenticity leads to suffering. And as, and as you know, I, I spoke about um, being the keynote last Friday at the Vermont Women in Leadership, which was great. And we talked about getting back in our frame and living with our, living within our authenticity, being our authentic self. So what, what does it mean to be authentic, right? What does it mean to be authentic? And it means that this is your true self, the highest version of you. And there is only one. And though it sounds cheesy to say we're all snowflakes, it's really true. We are all unique people, and if you, it's spirits really, right? Walking around having a human experience. And there are no two that are, are the same, because the universe is infinite, you know, the creator of all things, infinite. And so we really are all different, and we really all have, you know, um, something meant to be for us, why we were put on this earth, an authentic purpose. And I kind of like to look at it as, a treasure hunt, right? I just actually came up with that very spontaneously, which means I'm listening to my authentic self, because I feel we're at, we are obviously all treasure, and it's kind of like it's fun. It can be it can involve some pain too, but that's when we're actually not on track, right? So when we're we're on this treasure hunt to figure out really who we are, our authentic self, and the authentic self is very much polite and non-intrusive and inviting which makes me think of the divine part, right? And it's not shoved down our throat. She or he or they, they're waiting there to be reinvited back into the driver's seat after being pushed aside into the passenger side, the back seat, maybe even the trunk by the ego, which is the evil twin of the authentic self. All right, so when we are alignment, when we are alignment with the universe, God for me, okay, that's what I choose, source, higher power, whatever, we, we are really feeling in the groove because we are living our authentic self. And here's the thing. So when we behave in a way that's in alignment with who we are, our real true self, the universe rewards us with that. It's like way to go. It's kind of like when I give Giovanni the golden retriever, you know, an organic treat or something. I'm like, yes, yay. He's like, okay, I get it. This is what I'm supposed to do. Well, it's not that different for us. And when we get off track and behave in a way that's inauthentic, the universe corrects us. I don't want to say punish because I don't really believe that the universe or God or source punishes. I think it's more of a redirection, though it can feel like that because we can get smacked in the face if we're behaving super inauthentically. Maybe it's legal issues, um, you know, DWI, partner leaves because we're not listening to the whispers. As Oprah says, you, it's be better. My very dear friend Oprah, I hope to meet her someday. Listen to the whispers before they turn into bricks, right? And then we get hit with a brick, and it's like, well, I guess that wasn't working for me, okay? And then we're redirected, um, you know, back on track. Is here's the thing, what that redirection is is suffering. So when we behave authentically, we're, we are rewarded and and also reinforced. Like, yes, way to go. Here's the clear path. Keep following it. Good job. And then we, when we don't, we are met with suffering because remember that. The ego is the evil twin of the authentic self. It's just false, false, false. The ego is after um, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, what, and also very outcome-based. So the authentic self, again, doesn't need to focus on outcomes and doesn't choose it. The, the authentic self is very detached from outcomes, actually. The authentic self is focused on being present in the moment and focused on doing doing his her their best in this moment the ego is very much outcome based so and basically ignores often what the universe is saying i want for you to do this i want for you to do that and instead is reaching for that um you know approval be seen you know, optics be seen at this be seen at that because i don't get you the promotion that's all ego stuff and now the authentic self can land with a promotion and is more than likely to land with a promotion because the authentic self is focused on the process and the journey. And also, the ego resides in the past, you know, nagging us with previous mistakes and giving us all kinds of shame, and the future, looking for all kinds of approval and everything. And 
and rescuing and people pleasing to get where it needs to go. We've talked about all that stuff. And when we're authentic, we, we will actually, it's almost like, it's making me think of tortoise and the hare. Just kind of, you know, slow and steady wins the race. And the authentic self will come out on top if we listen. So it comes down to really feeling because we know, we know whatever we're doing is right. You know, when it really, we just know this, we feel feel that it's that it's right like we're on track with passion we know if we make a, a choice to be in a relationship or or a job well I say job career calling I am definitely in a calling it's definitely and this is how you know Oprah says this too but I've actually been saying this for a long time we're just in cahoots with it you know that you're in alignment with your authentic self um, professionally as a calling and also relationship wise well I'm thinking oh, let's stick with professionally for a second because it involves money all right so so if you would do it for free and Oprah says that I'm like when I heard her say that after I'd already been saying that to my students forever I'm like go Oprah because we are so like we are so in alignment in that way I just said to my students actually like two days ago so some of my stellar seniors I would there was to me some very nice things about the about just some very nice nice notes to me before they graduate and I said realize you're all stellars, and I would do this if I hit the lottery tomorrow, which I don't do because it's gambling, but if I did, I would still teach and educate also in my other role because I'm an educator, and I love that role as well because it sets me on, like, on, every day I'm on fire to get to Champlain College. Like, I can't wait. I just can't wait. And so you know if you're in alignment with your true self when you feel like that. And it also it's true with a, with a relationship. It's also true... Even, this is going to sound maybe ridiculous, but the house we're standing in right now, I knew within 0.2 seconds, without even seeing it, that this was meant to happen. And not just because it's, it actually needed a lot of work, to be truthful, but it's a very nice house. And I just knew it was meant to be. Like, it just felt right. It just really, really, really felt right. And so the universe is self-organizing, and it's going to, it's going to kind of land you where you need to be one way or the other. It can be easier, smoother, and more pleasant. Or it can, you can hit a lot of, I'm thinking like in pinball machines, when you hit the bing, 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 and you eventually go the way you're supposed to go. Or you push the button and start again. I mean, it's just how it goes. So the thing with the ego, because the ego is so focused on what I should do and optics and being seen at stuff and the eyes on the prize with the promotion or the this or the that, is that when we, that we, this becomes like a, a you know, like a trap and it, and and we get caught up in that, and it just is, it, it makes for a, a lot rockier path. And the other thing that's also involved in the ego trap is shame. The ego is shame often, often shame driven. And ironically, it attracts more shame to us because it's so, rela it's so attached to outcomes that when we quote unquote fail, I mean, there really are no failures, just redirections, but the ego doesn't tell us that. It says, you failed, you didn't listen, you should have gone to that thing where the boss was because you would have gotten that promotion instead of his niece, you know, and, and it brings so much shame, like I wasn't enough, I didn't measure up, and the, the ego is just fueled by all that stuff, trying to fill these holes and, and wounds with all these temporary band-aids of people saying nice things and, you know, checking boxes and all that stuff. So here we go. Inauthentic, inauthenticity leads to suffering, because the ego is the authenticity, in authenticity we're talking about, the evil twin of the authentic self leads straight to suffering. Listen to those whispers, those authentic whispers, and they will lead to your passion and lead you to be filled with inner peace and joy. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful, mindful, authentic day.